two of my favorite people besides you. <laughs> you should have just left it there. Yeah, <laughs> let, let people wonder. Yeah. Let people wonder. <laughs> <clears throat> also, <laughs> this is. No, no you're done. Is, is New York not, Times bestselling <laughs> author John Gilstrap. Good morning, John. Good morning. And uh, of course, our uh, good friend and legal uh, counsel to the program, Joseph Joey Toots for Ready. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, Who started off, by the way, throwing stones at Rob Don't try Mario. to bail yourself out here, Bill. <laughs> so I wasn't the only one. Joe, Don't Joe even came, bother. Joe came in a, uh, a slug in the way. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so far, Freddie's the only one that's escaped the wrath of this room. The pregame show today was brutal, just brutal. Gilstrap got his blood on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was spared. Nobody was spared. Uh, in all seriousness, by now I'm sure you've heard the news that uh, Berkeley County Sheriff Nathan Harmon has tendered his resignation, effective December uh, 27. We've uh, brought in Joe Ferretti, who has been part of our legal analysis of these uh, situations involving the sheriff's office, the Jefferson County situation. Uh, over the past couple of months, Joe, thanks for uh, being part of this this morning. Oh, my, my pleasure. And, and well, it, you know, it's I think you guys were mentioning it the other day on the show that this is one of the uh, more prominent stories for the year, perhaps Indeed. for the last few years. And uh, it's worthy of coverage. Uh, just before we begin this, I want to state that uh, in regards to Sheriff Harmon, I like Nate uh, personally. I've been uh, interviewing him since he announced his candidacy for sheriff. Uh, I thought he has uh, always brought it during his interviews. I think he's done a great job of answering questions. Uh, as it turns out, some of those answers weren't always honest on this program. Uh, that, that has been, unfortunately, something that we have to say is true. But uh, other, other than that, um, I have to say that I've, I've enjoyed Nate's uh, interviews while he has been here answering questions and, and many times during tough situations. Now, yesterday, he, uh, he, it became official that that resignation was tendered, and there's some conditions on that and some, uh, some reasons for it, too. So, Joe, maybe you could kind of get into that right now as to why Nate has made the decision to resign uh, and uh, his attorney, Harley Wagner, of course, is uh, his legal counsel. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, Mr. Wagner. I, I had a chance to speak with Harley uh, the, last evening as I was uh, en route here to, to Martinsburg, and uh, Harley took a significant amount of time to explain to me what uh, is behind the decision to resign. And it, uh, you know, knowing the, the quality of the attorney Harley is, I'm sure that the advice to to Nate was that you have to look at this both from a personal and a professional perspective. And um, professionally, Nate's a young man. Uh, I think he's 38 years old. And he's got a lot of work life ahead of him. Uh, and he, I'm sure, had to think about that in terms of uh, what would happen if these charges that were included in the petition, the 667 petition, the West Virginia Code section, mm -hmm. uh, if they were adjudicated and he was found to be uh, at fault or guilty uh, of those, any of those charges, uh, professionally it could be very damning and, and uh, damaging in terms of his uh, long-term prospects for employment. So I'm sure the calculus here was what do we do to preserve the ability to move on? And so professionally, I think the decision uh, was made to go ahead and, and resign this position uh, as painful as that had to be. He's an elected official. He, he fought hard for that election. Rob, you remember, we, we did the candidates for him, and mm -hmm. that was a hard-fought election, and uh, he put a lot into it. So I'm sure it was not taken lightly to, to resign that job. And then he had to look at it personally. Uh, and this is, I think we can go to the root cause of this, this whole situation. Personally, this involves a family member, uh, a daughter who has her challenges. And uh, I, I have no doubt that the sheriff had to look at that situation and say, part of the adjudication of these charges, these allegations against me, is going to include a family member, my family life, my daughter's life. And he didn't want to put his daughter and his family through that. So personally, he looked at it and said, this is probably the best option for, for me as an individual, as a father, is to, to go ahead and uh, resign this position so that uh, you know, we don't we spare, you know, the daughter and, and the family of having to uh, 
uh, go through all this and, and uh, because part of the defense is going to be, of course, uh, the, the activities of the daughter that night. And, mm-hmm. and it, again, it gets back to the root cause of all this. I, I think Nate was, uh, I think he was exercising pretty poor judgment in trying to protect a family member. And uh, that led to charges of obstructing uh, a criminal investigation and, uh, you know, being totally truthful with uh, the evidence from that investigation. So that, I think, in a nutshell, was, was behind this decision to resign. When you enter a plea, you, you're trying to do what, Joe, Joe, when you're trying to enter a plea to accept a deal and avoid a trial? Well, you're trying to get the very best deal you can personally and professionally, as we, as we covered. So I think that, uh, you know, and, and this, I, I got this from talking with, with Harley Wagner last night, that they looked at the evidence and they believed a lot of the charges could be contested and successfully overcome. Uh, and they uh, hardly alluded to some of the charges regarding directing business to a, 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 a third-party business, uh, the Civil Service Commission issue about circumventing that process and trying to elevate a deputy to another position. Uh, the belief was that they could contest those charges successfully. But uh, as Harley mentioned, and, and criminal defense attorneys uh, in general look at situations and say, boy, if my client is, has trouble with just one of these allegations or charges, then the whole, you know, the whole problem becomes uh, how do I contest these other charges successfully? And uh, I think uh, the decision was made that the poor judgment that was exercised in the criminal investigation of the automobile wreck involving the daughter was going to be problematic for them. And if, it, if that was something they could not overcome, they would have greater difficulty trying to contest the other charges. So as is often the case it with, with uh, and, and I hate to use the word criminal defendant because in this case it's, it's kind of a quasi-criminal case, but uh, in, in this situation when you look at the entirety of the charges and you see, boy, there's one that we, we have problems defending, uh, then the decision is made, let, let's look at ways that we can probably try to uh, forestall any adjudication and you enter into some sort of agreement. Now, let me say, uh, it's not clear to me and I'm not going to comment on uh, what agreement may be in place. I don't know the terms of that. That is still, it sounds like a a little bit of a fluid situation, but undoubtedly when somebody is faced with these charges and they decide to resign their job, you have to assume a resignation was part of the negotiations over a plea deal. So that, I think that's we can safely say that's going to be part of the deal, but we don't know the other terms, and that's yet to be uh, the, worked out. The journal this morning is reporting, in exchange, Harmon has agreed to plead guilty to the misdemeanor offense of obstructing a law enforcement officer in violation of Code 61517A. Harmon's three additional misdemeanor charges from his October indictment, two of providing false information to a state trooper, one of obstructing a law enforcement officer, will be dismissed. The state will recommend that Harmon be fined $500, the maximum fine for obstructing a law enforcement officer. The agreement will also require Harmon to provide a factual representation of how he allegedly interfered with Deputy William Henderson's investigation into his daughter's car crash in January, from which the criminal charges stem. And again, this is the article in the journal this morning. According to court documents, Harmon's factual representation must include a statement saying he contacted former Deputy Matthew Larson requesting that he respond to the crash scene with a portable breath test before testing his daughter, finding that she had an alcohol concentration above the legal limit. Harmon allegedly did not share this information with Henderson, thereby hindering his investigation. Last month, Harmon pleaded, uh, pled guilty, not guilty, sorry, not guilty to all four charges, Harmon submitted his letter of resignation to the county commission Tuesday, and his resignation is on the commission's agenda for their meeting today, which I think begins at 9.30, mm-hmm. uh, by the way. Well, and let me, let me caution folks. Uh, and w- what the journal's reporting uh, seems to be uh, having more specificity than, than even I'm offering this morning, but uh, this is all pending. Uh, judicial yes, review it's not uh, been accepted uh, yet. no oh no it, it has not and, and uh as we learned with uh, hunter biden <laughs> who <laughs> supposedly had a plea deal worked out you go before a judge things can go haywire in a hurry so uh th- th- this is all still 
a pending matter and uh, yet to uh, undergo judicial scrutiny. A judge has to accept that. Like, is it Faircloth? That, uh, I, I believe that's been the sign to right. Judge Faircloth. That's correct. Yeah. I, Joe, I, let's do a little bit more unwrapping. Uh, the charges that were, were stemming from the special grand jury uh, due to the uh, uh, due to the daughter's accident. Mm -hmm. Then subsequent to that, there were some uh, some uh, accusations made uh, by the prosecuting attorney and supported by the county commission mm -hmm. of civil service violation and also s sending business to uh, uh, to the Summit Point, the group that he was working with. Correct. Uh, now, the the only thing that appears, I think, uh, that appears before um, uh, Judge Faircloth would be that of the special grand jury. That would be the original four misdemeanor charges. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and that, then the other two never have really, uh, have they been formally filed uh, in court? Well, I, I mean, the charges you're referring to uh, regarding uh, the steering of business yeah. to the Summit Point uh, and, and also uh, the issue with the Civil Service Commission, all that is included in the petition. Uh, in the petition that, yeah, that, that was filed by jointly by the prosecuting attorney okay. and the county commission. Okay. All that is included in that petition. So I suspect that the uh, negotiations that have been taking place and that the journal refers to now uh, will encompass all of those, that they'll, they'll all try to be resolved because they're all misdemeanors under the, uh, under the West Virginia Code. So I would suspect that this will be an all-encompassing sort of plea deal if it is accepted by the courts. Would there have been uh, a possibility that some of the misdemeanor charges could have been upgraded to felony? It's possible, yeah. sure. Uh, it could, because as these cases are pending, there's always additional investigations yeah. taking place. Maybe people come forward with additional information, and it could uh, result in Dan Jaynes, who was the, yes. uh, the special prosecutor appointed, uh, that, that they could elevate those charges. What's, what's, the, tipping, what's the tipping point for um, felony versus misdemeanor? I know that you steal something, there's a dollar value, that above it, it, a certain dollar value. It, when it comes to behavior, what makes the difference? Well, well, when it comes to behavior, it's really what the code defines. Uh, because the, in our code, as is true in every state code, uh, there, there's certain conduct that is considered felonious. Okay, so uh, for example, a, a battery on, on somebody, uh, if it's done with certain, if it meets certain intent requirements, like intent to injure or harm or, or, or something like that, that can rise to a felony. So oftentimes it just comes down to the definitions in the code. So, but we're, we'll be faced with a vacancy. Uh, on mm -hmm. December the 27th. What happens now? What's the process? Well, this, this gets placed in the lap of the county commission. And uh, under West Virginia Code Section 3-10-8, uh, which governs uh, vacancies in the uh, office of the sheriff, uh, the county commission has uh, an option here. Uh, they can appoint somebody to fill that position of the same political party as the individual who's resigning the job, or they can appoint a temporary, a placeholder, if you will, of the position for 30 days. And then uh, within that 30 days period, you would expect the county commission then to come up with a permanent uh, appointment to that job until the next scheduled election. Yes. And in this case, I think the filing deadline is in January. Yes, for, it is. So we're, we're still time. before we're plenty of time, people yeah. could file yeah. for that office. So I, I don't under, anticipate there being any issue as far as having this particular seat, uh, this disposition on the ballot next uh, next fall. And I believe uh, Sheriff Harmon, Nate Harmon, w was going to be up for re-election anyway. Right. That's coming. Uh, That's right, because this is this is his yeah. third year. Yeah. So, uh, uh, by the way, I've got a text that said that Nate is 49. 49. 49? Yeah, I'm so sorry, did I say 38? Yeah. Yes, yeah. someone believes. Okay. Uh, and here, but before we continue further, I want to read this. I just got a text from Nate Harmon. He said, When this is done, I will advise you of the real truth. I'm upset this is being relayed in the manner it is. The justice system has been purposefully weaponized, and I can prove it. A lot of this information is simply a one sided understanding. I want an opportunity to do an exclusive when this is done. I texted back, can I read this on air? And Nate replied, yes. Yeah, and, and that was something that uh, Harley <clears throat> Wagner made clear to me last night, that the intent is 
that they will appear, Rob, here to discuss this at, at the appropriate time for them. And of course, that's uh, we still have matters pending in the court system, so obviously that has to be resolved before they will make those appearances. But he has promised to do that, and it will be interesting to hear his side of the story. And that's, you know, people can look at this in the public and say, well, when the individual resigns, we don't get a chance to have an adjudication or, mm -hmm. or a resolution of these, uh, uh, and we don't get to hear his story. And that's part of it. But uh, he, he has indicated he will take the opportunity to do that at, at a time of his choosing, of course, because it has to be, obviously, after the uh, court proceedings are concluded. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, uh, Rob, that it's going to be in the hands of the county commission, the process. Uh, it's my understanding it will not be on today's agenda. This happened too late for it to be on today's agenda. But the, the journal said it would be on today's agenda. So I don't know if it would be the case, but there's still enough time. There's a couple so weeks uh, that the uh, after this week the county commission can act. And, and Nate has made his uh, resignation effective December 27th. At, at one o'clock in the morning, at, at, at one, one minute, second one, past, one, yeah, one second past, past yeah, uh, midnight. Nice. So uh, that, and, and I, I'm sure he'll he'll still be reporting to work and doing the job. But in the meantime, the county commission does have to concern themselves with, if not getting a temporary appointment, and they're getting somebody permanently. So the nature of the the plea deal on the far side of this, assuming it goes through and is approved by the courts and what have you, how how disqualifying is this? record criminal record for future law enforcement work and what have you because misdemeanor right he's, he's yeah pleading. Mis misdemeanors and and that's well uh, it's a good question um and you know this this whole situation arises from employment in law enforcement so you, your first reaction would be is he ever going to get another job in law enforcement um boy that's that's a tough one uh because of this record now there's a uh, Harley reminded me last night there's a certain provision in the law about expungement and things of that nature after a year uh, for misdemeanor charges and, and charges of this nature. And um, uh, so sometimes you know, there's a technical procedure to get that wiped clean from the from the record books. But, you know, if you're filling out an application for a job, truthfully, you're still going to indicate that, you know, yeah, I had a former job. And if you're asked what happened, why would you leave after three years instead of a four year term? And you have to explain all that. Uh, law enforcement jobs, I don't know. Uh, but that's, as, that's a tough one. As far as statute goes, an elected official uh, uh, at the county level, uh, once you've served your sentence, felony slash mm -hmm. misdemeanor, mm -hmm. you're eligible for a run for office. Yeah, yeah, you're not disqualified you're not technically disqualified. under that's the code. Exactly. That, that's true. Now, uh, you know, I, I, I would, I don't think it's any great leap here to say that that locally, politically, he's he's. He's damaged. Okay, this, this is difficult for him, and so perhaps a, a decision is going to have to be made at some point down the road for him personally to and professionally to relocate. But voters tend to have a short memory. The gentleman that uh, uh, that was convicted of drugs uh, ran for <laughs> sheriff, and I think came in third place with a sizable number of votes. Yeah, we we are a forgiving uh, society, and and uh, especially if, if people have done their penance. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, you know, politically, I'll leave it to those in the public to, to address that. But I think, John, to your question, um, I think it, it's damaging in terms of his prospects uh, for future employment. And uh, I, I think he'll have to disclose the nature of, of this job ending uh, on any future job application he has. But this is a man, you know, I think, to be fair, I mean, this is a former state trooper. This is He's a Marine. Um, he's got a good record of public service in his background and and it's i'm sure as it was to the voters three years ago rob it's a very appealing and it's resume a, it was a pretty good first almost three years in office from the accounts of many people there are some yesterday on a facebook page who disagreed with that there was uh, a lot of disagreement with how Nate's social media postings were handled in terms of people who were critical of the sheriff's department mm -hmm. there was a lot of grousing about that on our facebook comment section yesterday but uh, otherwise, when you talk to the county commission members, they were very pleased with their relationship with the sheriff's office. I uh, had not heard any stories about a morale being an issue, whereas I had during previous uh, administrations. Mm -hmm. And uh, otherwise, uh, from a budget perspective, things seemed to be running quite smoothly. Yeah, uh, I, that was my sense of things. Uh, it was that it was being professionally run. Uh, and we, uh, in, in Burpee County's history, we can't always say that. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the sheriff's department, 
And and I think uh, lost on all this. And, and of course, this is his attorney speaking to me last night. But Harley Wagner reminded me that uh, this is a man who went out on his own dime into a lot of private businesses here in the county and instructed them on active shooter responses and safety and security. And, and he did that uh, with little fanfare uh, and little notoriety, but he did it quietly uh, in his role as the sheriff. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of local businesses around here who welcomed and were thankful to have that kind of instruction and guidance. So it, he's not without his accomplishments in the job. And there's another aspect of that as well. And we uh, hit on this yesterday, I think. Uh, his working relationship with the county commission uh, has been superb compared to what our more recent sheriffs have been. There's been a lot of friction between the county commission, mm. or county council, and the sheriff. Uh, Nate, uh, I think, worked hard, and the county commission was receptive to it. They have, they have forged a very productive relationship. And I have to add to this, <clears throat> you know, full disclosure, I consider Nate to be a friend. And, of course, that's kind of a cloud over any other view of what's happening. And then you throw in the asterisk, that you know there's a paternal instinct to to protect a family member whether it's it's legal or illegal right or wrong you know there there's an instinct there that that is um to to me it's a qualifier on on all of this perhaps not from the legal standpoint that's that's not my job but in terms of of i don't know that i would not have done exactly the same thing in, in the same position. And, and that's kind of a pall on all of this. That, that's fair, John, but I'll, I'll, I'll liken it to a situation that I see attorneys encounter quite a bit. Uh, when attorneys get called up on ethical violations, okay, we mishandle clients' money or for our own personal gain and things of that nature. And a lot of attorneys have been uh, penalized and punished for that and, and lost their license. The courts will look at the attorney and the judges will say, you know, in your position where you swear an oath to, to the state constitution and the United States Constitution, and you have a license to practice professionally, you have a higher duty than even the average citizen because of your unique role in dealing with the public. And you can look at Nate Harmon in the same way, that we elected him to be the chief law enforcement officer of the county. And while we can take and have sympathy for his situation uh, responding to a daughter's wreck and his daughter uh, allegedly being DUI and having to deal with all that and knowing that the daughter has presented Nate with some challenges over the years. You can sympathize with that, but yet you can also be critical of his judgment in, in not following the law, mm -hmm. which is what he's entrusted to do. And his duty and his standard that we have to hold him to is a little higher than the average person. Uh, if it was you and I responding to our daughter's <laughs> DUI, I can imagine, you know, we, we would probably be in that same mindset. What can I do to get her out of this, mm -hmm. and, you know, and help her beyond this? Uh, but when he's in that unique role, it becomes a little bit more problematic uh, uh, for him holding on to his job. I understand all of that intellectually. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. you know. It's just, yeah, your gut, your gut tells you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel that. And Joe, the, the Berkeley County prosecuting attorney's petition to remove from office, obviously this takes care of itself in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, it, it essentially moots that. Uh, that uh, Thank you for but, not saying but, mute, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But moot. <laughs> but, but not the, it does not remove the charges from the special grand jury. No. Well, again, that, that, three that, of the four may have been. Yeah. Well, that that could be a part of of any plea deal that is being negotiated right now. But so, that'd be with a judge. Uh, yeah, that all be goes before the judge. the judge for approval. Right. Yeah. Right. Because the grand jury didn't hand down those indictments. They're pending. And the judge is going to be asking when the parties appear before her. OK, what are we doing about these charges and, and what agreements have been reached? And that's what's pending. Joe, you were here from the beginning when uh, we had Nate in studio and the crowd of 10,000 angry libertarians bombarding our comment <laughs> oh section. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you, you get it to this point. Uh, your thoughts uh, from A to Z on this one as we wrap up this. Well, it, 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 it's there's a tinge of sadness about the whole thing. Um, and, and that's what's inescapable to me. Uh, and I, I, I know Nate personally, too. Bill, I sat with him yeah. uh, and his wife at, at your uh, Boy Scout mm -hmm. feet. And, and, and uh, just a wonderful individual, as is his wife. And we had a good time. Uh, I've had, you know, we've interviewed him, Rob, in the studio here quite often because he is very open uh, and, and willing to come in and, and talk about things. So 
Yeah, there's there's sadness about the whole thing. Uh, and, and um, you know, you can't escape the fact that he stepped over the line uh, with regard to a criminal investigation involving a family member. And uh, as John aptly points out, it, it, it's, it, you know, you, you have sympathy for that situation and, and the predicament he found himself in. Uh, he, he just made a couple of wrong decisions and he's paying the price. And it's about accountability, isn't it? And that's that's all we can ask of our public officials. And I think he, he has done the selfless thing by resigning his job, which has had to be a, an exceedingly difficult decision to make. As I said when I opened up that segment, oh, Bill, did you have a comment? No, I was going to add on what Joe said, and I agree with that point. I also want to, uh, as we've mentioned in the past, uh, applaud both the prosecuting attorney and the, uh, the county commission for not shying away from this issue and taking what I consider to be a very Yeah, it takes step. political courage yeah. to do that, yeah. Bill, and you're, you're right to point that out. Well, I opened up that segment that morning as we had Nate on with the angry libertarians lurking in the social media content section and, and made the point that it was not my job nor desire to prosecute Nate Harmon, nor was it my responsibility to acquit him of any charges. It was just to get the information out there, and if Nate had uh, uh, needed a form to get his side out, we provided it, and Nate and his attorney Harley have expressed a desire to come back and get their side of this again in the future. We would provide that, too. It's what we do here. <laughs>